Joining me right now is Guy Buckmaster and Susan Ward, and we're talking about Haiti and specifically a project that you've been working with where you're teaching the people in Haiti to grow their own coffee and then, then to use that as a source of income. How long have you been doing that? I've been doing that now about three years. been going down to Haiti for three years developing the, the coffee project. And Susan, you have a shop where they actually sell this coffee, right? That's right. It's called Buddy Brew Coffee. Uh -huh. And we're very passionate about uh, working with people like Guy who are working with the farmers to improve their farming standards to create exceptional coffee and create a, a sustainable income yes. for these folks in Haiti. And sustainable income is really the key to this, isn't it? A absolutely. It's social economic change for the um, country. I'm an activist in that area where I want to empower, teach them how to fish so that they can get their food day after day and not just be receivers, be able to sew back in and get a receipt that way. We're coming up on the third anniversary. Is the money getting to the people or are we still building a lot of buildings that are almost edifices to, uh, you know, modern, modern world cultures? Let's say I want to be of the belief that today we're changing that corner. We're turning that corner right now. We do uh, see a lot of buildings that have been built by NGOs, and there's been a lot of discussion about NGOs just building this infrastructure. But it would seem to me now is the point that they're able to reach out to the Haitian populace and empower them. So that's what I'm looking for. Now, specifically, we're talking today about a project where you have some 50 orphan girls that, for some reason or another, they're, they're not going to be able to have the same building they had before, and you're trying to raise funds for them. Yes. Um, they basically have had to be removed from the building that they were in, and now they're just um, um, very displacing about where they're at and I've been able to locate a new facility to, to take them to and so we have to put bathrooms in shower stalls and a washroom for them and then we're ready to bring these girls into it and get them back into school get them back into church and, and give them a good place to live what's the reception you've had from the people of Haiti are they open to these kind of ideas or do they think that they're being manipulated or what well uh, typically a farmer um, in Haiti associates that sort of like with the slave days they've always um, even s since 1804 when they became f the free uh, country the first uh, free african-american uh, country they, they still have felt like they've been under slavery because they've been so impoverished and so to get them back in, out into the field after things changed for them um, during the Clinton administration where rice kind of got dumped into Haiti right. um, it broke up the agrarian economy so they're slow to respond to this but the approach is to provide an, a product of excellence that the world will recognize and this coffee is one of those items and more and more people are going and leaving the cities and going back out to the country because of the earthquake everything collapsed and so many thousands of people died because they were in this uh, this, this area where there was just so many people yeah, the, the urban areas were just um, overrun with people, little services, you know, sanitation was poor, um, and, and now with things like cholera outbreaks and everything, people want to disassociate with these tight urban areas, and so they have to look for some other opportunity uh, rather than selling wares on the street, and, and the agronomy um, uh, potential is very strong now. Now, you're doing something that's kind of unusual. You decided not to go to the churches because the churches have been giving a lot of their own money, that you decided to go to Ybor City and have a concert there. Tell me about that. Um, it's it's my belief that the young people of America today still have a heart for a cause. And when it comes to the children, all girls that are the most susceptible in, in Haiti, um, I, I've been led to believe that the, the people in Ybor City can be drawn to good entertainment. We have seven bands playing there, and they can come in and drop their three dollars at the, at the door and know that that's going for a good cause to support these girls in getting a new home. And you got a Haitian restaurant that's also involved in this as well? Absolutely. Right? Cafe 22, brand new Haitian restaurant has great food. I've eaten there twice um, and, and it's out on uh, 24th in Hillsborough, uh, 22nd in Hillsborough and uh, so I went in there and I said I've been led that Haitians need to help Haitians. Will you help me help your Haitians? Uh -huh. and, they, and, they, and they said absolutely and so they're coming down and they're going to provide Haitian food. So this is December the 8th of 2012. That's a Saturday evening from 530 to midnight. It's going to be located where? At um, basically the crossroads of 7th Avenue, the Strip, if you will, okay. on Ybor City and 15th. Great. Yes. Well, this is going to be a great event, so we encourage people to do out there. It's great to see that you can get involved in helping Haiti and also stop by the Buddy Brew Cafe. You can help the gals in Haiti as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you, Al. Yes.